So the last time we featured a Valkyrie AIO was during our 8-way CPU cooler showdown review back in 2023. Since then the company's been a little quiet, however, they are back with some new coolers including the Surge 200 watt air cooler and the V360 Lite 360mm AIO. In this review we are taking a closer look at the V360 Lite with its mecha aesthetic pump cover and what the company says is a high speed pump that was previously reserved for its top tier offerings. So let's see how this £110 360mm AIO stacks up against the opposition. So this is the Valkyrie V360 Lite, you should be able to pick this up in the US now with an MSRP price of around 135 bucks. It's available in this black or a white colour scheme and the price is same no matter which colour scheme you go for. There's also a 240mm version which is around 120 bucks. MSRP. In the UK you can pick this up from some retailers priced at around £110 for the 360. Valkyrie says the V Lite series is a performance focused AIO featuring a high speed pump that was previously reserved for top tier offerings and capable of speeds up to 2800 RPM. The distinctive pump design stands out with its mecha aesthetics and magnetic cover that rotates in 90 degree increments for always upright installation. The included Valkyrie B12 fans feature high static pressure, fluid dynamic bearing and PWM speed control of 800 to 2150 RPM and it comes with a 5 year warranty. So this is compatible with all current Intel and AMD desktop platforms, so Intel, LGA, 1851, 1700, 1200, 11.5x, etc. AMD, AM4, AM5 platforms. One of the most interesting things about this cooler and one of the reasons why I wanted to take a look at it is this pump top cover. It's a very different style that I've not really seen before from any AIO CPU cooler. Valkyrie call it a mecha aesthetic, so it's got like a mechanical look to it, I guess. On one side of the CPU block is the Valkyrie logo. Let's turn it around so it's upright. At this side is the Valkyrie logo. That is illuminated with ARGB lighting when the cooler is all connected. And this other lower portion of the block that you can just see through this, I guess it's a perspex or acrylic window, you can see the actual PCB, which gives it that kind of mechanical or industrial look. I quite like the look of that. It won't be to everyone's taste, but I do quite like the look of that. It's different. Also, this top cover can be removed. It's just held in position magnetically. It's got the pogo pin contacts there for the electrical connection. So that means you can also rotate it in 90 degree increments so no matter which way you have this installed in the system or which way around your system is you can always have this with the logo facing in the correct orientation as well as that top piece being removable this lower plastic part of the cover is also removable there's no real benefit to that and it's shaped so that it only fits in one position, so it only goes one way around with the tubing. The only benefit I can think of is removing this does allow a bit better access to those mounting screws there, so it improves access for installation. This pump top cover, so the lower part of the top cover, this has got the cable to the ARGB lighting, and you can see it's a standard 3-pin 5-volt cable, so this will connect directly to a standard 3-pin 5-volt ARGB header, either on the motherboard or to a ARGB hub if you want to use a hub. There's no hub required or software required to run the cooler, but it does use those standard 3-pin 5-volt ARGB connections. The radiator is an all-aluminium radiator. You can spin it round, you can see there. There's 12 waterways and a dense Finstack arrangement. You can also see that it is sort of a it's not a matte finish it's like a satin finish on the radiator it's a nice smooth even satin finish coating it's not glossy the one thing i can say with these satin finishes which i've noticed on several other aios is they do show up fingerprints quite badly but once you've got this installed into your system you're not really going to be touching the radiator so it isn't such a problem. At the radiator side, you can see tubing is crimped in position, so it's fixed in place. There's no rotation or movement as such on those fittings. Tubing is flexible, so you can move it to position it where you need it in the system, but there's no rotation on the fittings. The tubing is a low evaporation rubber tubing, 
and it is covered with a braided sleeve in for aesthetic reasons. As I've said several times, this used to be a premium feature of AIOs, not so much now. You see this braided sleeve in on just about every AIO on the market, but it does look good. It also comes with some tubing clips in the accessories pack. So you've got three of these plastic tubing clips just to neaten the tubing up and there's also some velcro straps for neating the wiring up or managing cables at the cpu block side the tubing is rotatable it's on 90 degree rotating fitting so if you do need to adjust the positioning to install this in the system or to mount the radiator you've got some decent amount of rotation on those fittings with 20 years of pc manufacturing experience cyberpower pc are the best in the business with the largest range of parts available in the uk our team of experienced builders will expertly build and test each system to be delivered to you the very next day check out cyberpowersystem.co.uk at the base of the cpu block is a copper micro skived coal plate these brackets come pre-attached to the cooler and you use these same brackets for mounting either on intel or amd platforms you do have to install some brackets to the motherboard depending on which socket you're using but these come pre-attached the pump has a pwm speed range of 800 to 2800 rpm and as you can see the only cable to this pump unit is a standard four pin pwm header cable so this will also connect directly to a standard four pin pwm motherboard connection or to a standard four pin pwm uh, fan hub if you're using a hub. The fans are Valkyrie B12 fans. These have an opaque blade design, ARGB lighting on those fans. They also have daisy chain connection so all the wiring is daisy chained so the fan wiring they're all connected to each other. That will neaten up the wiring once you have it installed in the system. They also have anti-vibration rubber mounts and as you can see they come pre-installed to the radiator. This is something that a lot of the AIO manufacturers have started doing now, pre-installing fans to the radiator, which does speed up the installation time. It is quite a laborious job installing fans to the radiator, so it's nice to see that the companies are sending them out with the fans pre-installed. The only problem with that is if you want to run the fans in a pull configuration on the opposite side of the radiator, you will have to, to disconnect them or unscrew them from the radiator and attach them to the other side, which will add time to the installation. The fans have a PWM speed range of 800 to 2150 RPM, maximum airflow of 81.68 cubic feet per minute, maximum air pressure of four millimeter H2O, and a maximum noise output of 30.5 decibels. Included with the cooler is an installation guide and warranty booklet. Then all the installation hardware for Intel and AMD installation, including an Intel specific backplate, upper mounting brackets for AMD, the installation, AMD bracket mounting screws, fastener brackets for AMD sockets, Intel standoffs and Intel AMD bracket thumb screws, long and short radiator mounting screws, three tubing clips, some Velcro straps for cable management, a small tube of thermal compound, and last but not least, a nut socker, whatever one of those is. So that's a quick look at the features and specifications of this Valkyrie V360 Lite. Now let's have a look at how you install this cooler and check out the thermal performance. If you want to read more information on this cooler and check out the thermal performance charts in more detail, make sure you head over to kitguru.net where there will be a full written review page for the V360 Lite. Our latest CPU cooler test system uses an AMD Ryzen 9 9950X CPU, so I'll quickly run you through the installation process on AMD AM5. First, you need to remove the stock plastic AMD mounting brackets from the motherboard and replace those with Valkyrie's own plastic mounting brackets and use the screws labeled AMD to fasten them in place. Next, add another metal mounting bracket on top of the plastic brackets and fix those in place using the four provided thumb screws. There's no need to apply any thermal compound to the CPU as it's already pre-applied to the base of the CPU block. So now you can lower the CPU block into position over the CPU and align with the two standoff screws and fasten that down evenly and progressively tightening each of the spring-loaded screws a little at a time. For the wiring, connect the three-pin ARGB connection from the pump to the splitter connection on the fans, then connect the female three-pin connector to a five-volt ARGB motherboard header. Next, connect the fan four-pin PWM cable to a PWM fan header on the motherboard, usually labeled CPU underscore fan, and connect the PWM cable from the pump to a PWM header on the motherboard, usually labeled either AIO pump or CPU OPT. Mount the radiator inside your case and that's the installation complete. 
So let's start by looking at noise output as this will give us a better understanding of thermal performance based on the noise. The V360 Lite isn't the loudest cooler we have tested, but at 53 decibels, it's up there amongst the higher output coolers. At this noise level, it will be distracting. So if you are sensitive to noise, you will need to work on tuning the fan curve to your liking. At 110 pounds, we wouldn't class the V360 Lite as a budget AIO, more mid-range. However, with an average CPU temperature of 62 degrees over ambient the v360 light performance at max fan speed is bettered by some budget coolers such as the montec hyperflow argb and even the id cooling fx 360 isn't far behind either reducing all coolers fans to hit the 40 decibels noise target puts everything on a level playing field and the true thermal performance can be seen in this scenario we have to reduce the valkyrie v360 light fan speed right down to 1380 rpm which puts it only on par with the id cooling fx 360 which is significantly cheaper at 66 degrees C over ambient. While the Montec Hyperflow ARGB, which is also cheaper than the V360, is 3 degrees C cooler. In the PBO test, the important metric is clock multiplier as the CPU automatically adjusts frequency based on a target temperature. So the measured CPU temperature between coolers is very close. In this test, the Valkyrie V360 Lite is again towards the bottom end of the chart with a clock multiplier of just 52.3, which means the CPU is running around 30 megahertz slower than the top performing coolers which isn't a huge performance loss but it confirms that the thermal performance of this cooler isn't great so on to my closing thoughts and pros and cons of the valkyrie v360 light aio the installation process is reasonably quick. There's no additional hubs required, so the wiring is really simple. It connects up directly to motherboard headers, so that speeds up installation and makes it quite simple to install. The fans come pre-installed to the cooler, which is quite common nowadays. A lot of AIOs come with the fans pre-installed, which again reduces the installation time. But there's those extra metal brackets that go on top of the plastic brackets for AMD installation. That seems a bit unnecessary. I'm sure Valkyrie could have thought of a way to just utilize the plastic brackets or just one set of brackets for AMD installation. Installation on Intel is pretty similar, it just means you use some standoffs instead of the plastic brackets. The RGB lighting effects are okay, nice and bright on the fans and on top of the CPU block. I do like this aesthetic that they've going on, this kind of mechanical aesthetic where you can see the PCB on top of the CPU block. I quite like that, but that is a subjective thing others might not like the look of that and I do like the fact that you can just take this off and rotate it around so whichever way you've got the block installed in the system this will always be facing the correct way up the RGB lighting effect on the fans like I say are nice and bright and easily configured by motherboard software but there is some light bleed from the individual LEDs around the fan hubs that could have been diffused better thermal performance isn't great this is £110 in the UK for this AIO, which I guess puts it in kind of the mid-range. I'd say below £100 could be budget, above that, or from £100 to £200, I'd say that's mid-range. But this has more like the performance of a budget cooler. In fact, some of the other budget coolers like the Montec Hyperflow ARGB, that does perform slightly better than this, and it is £40 to £50 cheaper than this. Even the ID Cooling FX360 which is around £40 cheaper than this, also has very similar thermal performance. And the fans are quite loud also at maximum speed. So overall, it's not a bad cooler. It does have reasonable performance, even on the 9950X, which is a very powerful CPU. Put this on a lower powered CPU, it will be absolutely fine. It doesn't overheat the 9950X, so it can be used on a CPU like that, but the performance isn't as good as some other coolers of a similar price or even cheaper. So that's the Valkyrie V360 Lite. Let me know what you think of this cooler in the YouTube comment section. If you've enjoyed watching this video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to KitGuru if you're not already a subscriber. If you enjoy what we do here at KitGuru and you want to help support us, you can always head over to the store and pick up some merch or you could even subscribe to our Patreon. And as always, if you want to catch up on all the in-depth technical reviews, head over to our website.